Hello, everybody. Well, it's Magical Monday, and I couldn't get on yesterday or the day before. It's been so busy. So uh, I want to talk to everybody a little bit about going through the dark night of the soul and a few other things before I do the reading. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand the dark night of the soul. Dark night of the soul is you. It is you going through uh, your past and the things now that are really, really bothering you. And the things that we're hanging on to, the problems from the past, uh, things that we could have changed from the past, and people that have hurt us, uh, we need to release that. And uh, Dolores Cannon says it the best way, release them with love and break the contract. Because everything is a learning experience. We need that polarity, that positive and negative, that yin and yang to uh, teach us things. So we can't just live in the positive all the time. Yeah, that would be amazing. I would love it. I tried it. It doesn't work. You have to have positive and negative to balance it out. So it is a balancing uh, act. And meditation is very important. Uh, you have to go, you have to zero out your thoughts and listen to what comes in within your within your heart space and uh in your intuition and those are the answers that we're, we're waiting for those are the answers we need to hear um our thoughts can get crazy so if it's hard for you to meditate i suggest doing it late at night just before you go to sleep because the whole house with me that's when i usually do it sometimes i go out and ground myself and do some meditation and try to clear my mind um now i'm working on my trigger trigger moments because all of our trigger moments, uh, like the dog in the back, scratching her back, <laughs> that's our trigger moments. And it's not somebody else's. We might think that, oh, they did that to us. No, we reacted the way we did. So we have to think of the reactions that we're doing and mellow them out. Because uh, a lot of times you have reactions and people take it the wrong way because of your reactions. And then it's not a good scene. Or you, you're you losing friends and you're losing family and you're losing people that you once loved because everybody's changing. We're going through a lot of change. Um, I look at it this way. I had a lot of people in my life at one time and I was the one reaching out to them all the time. I was always reaching out to see if they were okay, to, to talk to them, to this and that. Well, when I moved, I did reach out to him a little bit. I did handwritten letters and I'd call him and he'd go to voicemail. Uh, they weren't reaching back. So when you have these people that you're acquainted with, and I'm finding other ones like that, that I'm the only one reaching out to them, it's a one-sided friendship. It's a one-sided communication. So you'll see people like that kind of fade into the background. They're like the uh, background people. After a while, they came into your life for a little while. They made an imprint. They did something that taught you something, whether good, bad, or indifferent. And then they left. And that's what it is. And that's what I'm seeing a lot in the world right now. And people are having a hard time with it. Um, it's very devastating. And you have these people that you think are your friends or your family, and you love them very much. And you're the only one putting yourself in the situation. You're the only one putting yourself in their life because they're not putting themselves back in yours because they're just going on their life. And every time you call or you reach out, that's you doing that. But step back and see if they do. And if they don't do it, then you're just keeping that alive when it wasn't alive. It was just you keeping it alive. So that's what I've found in a lot of my journeys and my uh, friendships and family and things like that. I was the only one keeping it alive because I loved them so much and I cared about them. And they obviously didn't feel the same way about me. And that's okay. I got over it. I, I feel, you know, I look at it. What did they teach me? And that's the best way to look at it is what did they teach me? So I just wanted to cover that a little bit because a lot of people are having a hard time with the dark night of the soul. We can't go and hang on to everything that someone did to us. If we do, we will be pissed off the rest of our lives. We will be hurt and crying the rest of our lives. We can't go back and change anything. So if we're dwelling in the past and we're living in the past, 
then we have some serious issues that we need to overcome because we're still hanging on to it. And if we're still hanging on to it after the three years that we've all been walking through the dark night of the soul, we've all been doing stuff and if we're still hanging on to it, then you need to do some deep diving and see what's going on because it's, it's you that is hanging on to it. So we got some great cards and I did get a new deck for Christmas. So I did some of those cards and those are going to be beautiful. The first card that we got <clears throat> was the three of water. The three of water appears in order to caution us against weighing down a potential outcome with the burden of our expectations. Make sure your hopes and desires are realistic and let go of those that are not. Free yourself of the binding nature and weight of unrealistic expectations, and in doing so, allow the outcome you seek to manifest in its own way and time. Remember, the more you expect, the more disappointment you will be if the future you hope for does not unfold as you imagine. Yeah, uh, look to the future with anticipation. And, and it's an exciting future coming up. And there will be some people that fade out of our lives. And they were only in it for a short time. That was the agreement. We didn't realize that we had that agreement, but we did have that agreement. And the next card that came out with that was the Angel of Ocean healing. You need to work a little magic now to reconcile opposites. Be patient and compassionate, and you will get everything done. Uh, this is a balancing. We really need to balance right now. Uh, we have a lot of unbalancing going on here, and I feel it in the energies around me. We also got the two of water. The two of water uh, addresses the subject of losing our senses of self our identity and independence upon entering into a new romantic relationship or a friendship or a family, whatever the combination is, it reminds us of the importance of retaining our independence, least the relationship become one of codependency and in inequality. Remember that romantic love is not the only love relationship in our life. There are the love shared between friends, between humans and animals, companions for nature, goals, and our interests. These loves are still worthy of our time and attention. Do not focus completely on the new to the detriment of the old. The two of water also symbolizes the importance of not allowing yourself to be drawn into a quarrel between friends or lovers or to be forced to take sides. If you find yourself in such a situation, remain non-judgmental and compassionate and loving of both. Yeah, I agree completely. Uh, you don't want to get mixed up in a friendship or a love or an interest, uh, any of that, uh, because we did get the nine of swords, anxiety, what ties you in knots at 3 a.m., look small in the light of day, try to keep perceptive when negative thoughts get in your way. This is panic, fear, guilt, insomnia. A lot of us aren't sleeping at night. I know that. <clears throat> We have to try to balance ourselves out right now. Uh, it's it's very detrimental because we did get the six of air and that is also symbolizes a bad habit of making comparisons in a divisive manner that separates and creates an a versus them situation, a you versus them situation. When the six appears, it cautions you to be more embracing of others differences and warns not fall into the trap of judging others because they think or believe in a different way you do. Yeah, time to research and investigate also. Uh, weigh the pros and cons, be willing to com compromise. Don't let rigidity hamper possibilities of success. Um, we have to watch what we're doing right now. There, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that just is out of control because we did get the justice, the balance. And take a practical approach. If you need to make a decision, go with what is realistic rather than idealistic. The solution doesn't need to be perfect, just workable. If a decision that affects you is made by others, accept it is the best they can do at this time. Um, we need to be careful right now, uh, really careful right now. We need to tiptoe 
uh, Christmas time is here and there's a lot of heavy energy out there. I seen that the other day at a shopping mall. <laughs> Very crazy. She had a mask on and she was screaming. It was scary. Um, we also got choice. And this is, this, this is a very meaningful card. Are you spending all your time looking for options and opportunities because you do not like the options that have already been presented to you? Sometimes our searching fails to uncover a choice that brings us happiness or an outcome that we desire so we continue to look hoping that something better will come along in this way we may be only delaying the inevitable uh the choice card if you look at it every action there is an equal reaction for every choice you make and then act upon or do not act upon there will be a direct or indirect reward or consequences uh i always look at this card as this you got three doors it's kind of like let's make a deal okay you have the crying door, the depressing door, the uh, I can't handle life door. You've got the beautiful outlook of the light door. And you've got the third one, the unknown. So you have every choice to do what you need to do. Make We have to make the right choice, though, and our gut intuition will tell us the right choice. We always know that. Because we did get, with that, we got the sun. We got happiness. So I think we're going to go into a great door. Appreciate your deserved success in this special time of rest and recuperation. Enjoy feeling safe and appreciate the harmony that is all around you. Yeah, it's Christmas time. And we really need to feel safe and secure and happy with all that. Uh, the last card that popped out was the Ace of Pentacles, Prosperity. Maximize your good fortune and make your money work for you. You deserve it. It's time to make a wise financial decision. Um, this one is new beginnings. This one is also success, prosperity, security, creativity. We've been getting the creativity card a lot lately um, because we need our creative juices flowing. We need we need to do stuff. We need to uh, make things happen. The practical magic card, one card come out, and this card is amazing. Lunar strength, lunar magic. Draw an empathy, contemplation, and intuition, trusting the quiet, gentle power within you and connecting with your inner knowing. Everyone is a combination of yin and yang or feminine and masculine energy. This has nothing to do with gender, but rather the constant ebb and flow of qualities your you naturally embody and can also consciously adopt so-called feminine energy also referred to as lunar or yin energy is a powerful force and an immense strength yet is a gentle is gentle too introspective inward and internal is it is full of calm and fluidity it is linked to intuition to the subconscious to dreams creativity and the flow of emotion and is associated with the magic and enchantment of the moon and its cycle and with the mysteries. When this card comes to you, it indicates that you currently, your current situation will benefit from your embodied sum of this lunar energy, helping you to cultivate compassion, wisdom, and your inner knowing. Listen to yourself and others and allow yourself to be vulnerable, sensitive, and empathetic. It's encouraging you to look deeper, to consider less traditional solutions and to trust your ability to discern the right options for you. Most of all, this card asks you to recognize and honor your own power and remember your strength. It can also suggest you look again. Something may be hidden from you, or perhaps there's an important truth you are refusing to see. It's time to pause and look within so you can discover how you really feel about this situation. Your answer will come from knowing you, who you are, understanding what is most important to you, and connecting to your inner heart so you are able to express your true emotions without fear of judgment or criticism. Slow down and make time for gentle wandering, for nurturing yourself and any new ideas you have, and for going with the flow while you reflect on your options. Allowing yourself to be vulnerable can be scary, and going off plan can feel counterproductive. 
in a world of structure and rationality, but attuning to the feminine energy of the earth and acknowledging your feminine power, regardless of gender, is a mark of strength that will increase your your understanding, spiritual perception, and awareness of your path forward. Consider how you can start to interrogate feminine strength into your life. Bring your magic to your everyday existence and honor and develop your intuition. There is immense wisdom in trusting your inner guidance and following your heart. Now is the time to embrace it. That is a beautiful uh, message for us, definitely. Now, we have one that came out in the Soul Helper Oracle. And that is a wonderful surprise is coming. Something entirely new awaits you. And that is a 27 and that is a 9. Drawing this card heralds a surprise. Something completely new will appear on your soul path. It will take the form of a unique and magical opportunity, something more significant than it than it might at first appear, or an enchanting and uplifting encounter. It is an opportunity that should not be ignored. These are the moments that make our lives magical and worthwhile, moments that carry the promise of adventure and a song of freedom. What could make life sweeter than a wonderful, joyful surprise? You have drawn this card at this time, and there is a chance that you might otherwise miss the surprise or even ri even a risk that you might spoil it, which would be a great shame. Place this card somewhere prominent nearby as a visual and daily reminder. Go out and meet new friends or coworkers. Do something with like-minded people and live your life in the near future like a child, carefree and playful. Be silly, even a bit irrational. The real surprise in life, those that are of true value, are best seen through the eyes of a child. Keep the otter with you as a power animal. And since otters love water, why, why not seek out some water too? Your helpers for the next 21 days is the power animal is the otter, the herbal essence is vanilla, the healing crystal is shispera, and the number is nine. The number nine reveals that something new to learn. Be open, receptive, and curious enough to seek it out. You will then find wisdom and an unconditional deep healing love. Number nine will help you reach a point of completion so that you can turn your att attention to the mysteries of the unknown and the new. Is energy, its energy field is indestructible without being flexible. Number nine always remains true to itself. Nine plus nine is 18 whose digits add up to nine. Nine times nine is 81, whose digits add up to nine. Multiply any number by nine, add the two digits of the resulting number together and they are always add up to nine. It, it is almost as if it is absorbing every other number through this calculation. Number nine teaches you how to do this to accept the powers offered to you in order to achieve perfection. This number is fulfillment and completion, but also a beginning and an end. Yeah, uh, we are going into new beginnings and it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Um, the next card that we got was the shield maiden again. Make plans and focus. We got her not too long ago. Have a plan or strategy in place before moving forward. The shield maiden is the female knight in shining armor. In many ancient traditions, women were seen as equal to men and so joined them on their raids and fought with them on the battlefield. In this deck, the shield maiden brings a fierce, fiercely feminine energy, the power to be a warrior while retaining feminine sensitivity. She is ready to put her plan into action. She's ready to go into the in battle. Her medicine helps us move beyond any unsettled feeling when our plans start to take shape and follow through with our strategies in order to be where we want to be. Shield Maiden work together in times gone by to create shield walls of protection. So she also shows us how to work with others in order to bring our plans to fruition. 
take some time to assess what your next steps will be. All great warriors have a plan. You are a sensitive being. And if you are not prepared for the task you are taking on, you could end up feeling exposed and helpless. The ancestors guidance that is coming to you now is a reminder that you have a warrior's heart and that you have it within you to be more prepared and focused than you have been recently. So have a strategy in place and then let your guides support you as you move forward. That was a great message. There's a lot of feminine coming through. I think right now we need to really be compassionate with the feminine. I think that's what it's saying. Because when we use our masculine, it's not as compassionate. Oracle, wait for important information. We have something coming through, and I've felt that for a while now. Be open and receptive to information. Gather facts so that you can make a decision that is in line with your integrity. The Oracle is the truth speaker and insight bringer of this deck, the ancestor who will be your best outspoken girlfriend, someone who will tell you exactly what you need to hear to move forward. In this deck, she is remnants of the Oracle of Delphi, a psychic priestess of ancient Greece who was able to receive information and make predictions. She holds a bowl that has sacred smoke rising out of it, bringing the message to look beyond all you can see and gather information in order to make an accurate evaluation of your current situation. Angels, ancestors, and the universe are speaking to you at this time. So look and listen for important conversations, signs, and messages that will point you in the right direction. You are being guided to wait for more information before making any fast moves because at the moment, you are letting your wants get in the way of your needs. There is an important opportunity for you to see everything clearly at this time, but you will only be able to do so if you are willing to truly open your eyes. If you have been waiting for further information about a choice, you have take you have to make or act have to make or action you have to take. Don't take matters into your own hands, but let what needs to be revealed be revealed. Then you'll know what to do next. Angels are supporting you. Trust them. That's a great message, definitely. Okay, let's see. The last one we got was the High Priestess Harness Mystic Powers. Align with the light and focus on all things positive, positive. The High Priestess is the physical embodiment of the divine feminine. There is a lot of feminine going on here. I think somebody is, has, is not in balance and they're using too much masculine we have to balance our masculine and feminine so something here is telling me there is too much masculine going on and not enough feminine the high priestess is the physical embodiment of the divine feminine the teacher in human form she has had many names through time and space but her essence has remained similar fierce powerful and disciplined In many traditions, particularly pre-Christian, the high priestess was in charge of spiritual and religious orders and was the voice of authority and guidance from the, from the teachers. The high priestess in this deck is the consort and partner of the high priest. If you look at them together, you will see they mirror each other's energy. Inspired by the Egyptian teacher Isis, she holds a sistrum, a musical instrument, in her left hand and an Anka, the Egyptian symbol of eternal life, in her right hand. She is joined by a black cat, represents the Egyptian teacher Bast, who protects her from lower energies, and she stands strong in her glory and power. You are a mystic which, with the capacity to connect with the energies that go beyond the human senses. Within you is a force of magic that is directed by your will. There is an opportunity for you to rise up at this time, but it requires dedication and discipline. You are being guided to look at what you are working on or at the situation before you and determine where your priorities lie. 
If you are unable to figure that out, you must use your intuition and discernment to focus on what will bring you closer to your goal and happiness of everyone involved. When this card arrives, it's also important for you to check in with your intuition as it will give your gut you guidance and that will be important for your growth. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, that was a great card. We've had some great cards. Now, the card we got with the Divine Master was the Divine Director. Trust the process. Create space for divine order to unfold. This is a beautiful card. We've never got this one. The Divine Director is an advanced cosmic light being from the heart of Source who is dedicated to helping Earth and all her inhabitants align with divine purpose. He is one of the more elusive Divine Masters part extraterrestrial, part angel. He can take many forms, but in most cases looks like a character from Star Trek. He works closely with the angels to ensure they are fulfilling their duties and helping the humans they are char charged with protecting. You are being guided to stop trying to micromanage the universe. Sometimes events are beyond human comprehen comprehension and thus trying to figure out the finer details of life may be holding you back rather than taking you forward. When the divine director comes to you, you are being invited to trust that there is a purpose behind what is unfolding. The choices and circumstances and challenges you are facing will lead you to know and trust yourself at a deeper level. If you find yourself not knowing where to go from here, there's a good chance that there's an aspect of your life that you have refrained from dealing with, healing, and sharing. In order for you, the next step to be revealed to you, you are encouraged to address the aspects of your life that you have overlooked. For then, for when you do so, you allow the energetic wheels of the universe to take you forward. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm thinking there is somebody really holding back right now. There is somebody that it has a lot of uh, masculine going on, and they're really out of balance. Um, I am going to read the gateway of activation light before the other ones, because these, we got two of these, and these were amazing. We got the soul star activation fulfilled. Fulfilling soul contracts, remembering who you are. The soul star chakra is the energy center that is found around 6 to 12 inches above the crown and connects us directly with soul wisdom. It is our gateway to the etheric realms, which hold all the lessons of all the incarnations that we have experienced through our soul star, we access information and wisdom like a computer, connecting to the internet through broadband instead of having to move through the dimensions to access the information. We can remain connected at all times and download support as necessary. The, Egyptians, the Egyptian teacher Horus appears on the card as our spiritual guide. His hawk head image is said to illustrate his connection to the sun, moon, and stars. As a keeper of energetic portals to hidden realms, he can help us remember our starry origins, open psychic visions, and connect directly with the wisdom that is, is held in the stars. Through your previous journeys, you have learned much about the inner workings of your soul and about the cycles of karma. Before this incarnation, you set a powerful intention to remember your divine origins. At this point, you are in a powerful space where you are remembering who you truly are, and you know that you have to have it within you to make a great difference in your own life, the lives of those you love, and of course, the world. This remembering is in alignment with the soul contracts you made before coming to this realm. If you find yourself worrying, if you are making the right decision, know that even if you aren't conscious of it, all that you have chosen so far is in accordance with your, your soul's evolutionary plan. And when you draw this gateway, you are open up on high levels. Yeah, 
that is a great card to get. The other card that we got was the I am presence, light body activation, ass assessing the divine within. The I am present is frequently mentioned in the ascending master teachings. It's the individualized presence of the divine that rests within us all. Personally, I see no difference between the I am present and what other people call the inner teaching or higher self. It's the aspect of divinity that lies within us, offering us great wisdom. It's the inner Buddha or Christ consciousness. It's the part of our soul that has never forgotten that it's connected to divine love. Even when our faith is challenged, there's a part of us that knows there's something out or in there, and it's the I am. This card is the gateway that allows you to reflect upon the fact that the incredible infinite divine being is within you always aligning with love and always offering wisdom for a long time the i am has been dormant and we have been encouraged to believe we are ins insignificant and powerless but the more we connect with the divine the more we realize that it's resting gently within us we are the divine expressing itself we are a faucet of the God particle, having an individual experience, but we are part of the whole. You are experiencing a great shift, which is helping you understand yourself in ways that you previous was previously impossible. This is an exciting time. You are connecting with the highest form of intelligence within you. The body of light within you is growing brighter, and you are becoming aware of how your actions and choices affect the unfolding of your future. The bright light you are is expressing itself unapologetically. Yeah, I completely agree. We shouldn't have to apologize for anything. Our choices are our choices. Now, I got a new deck. And we got some amazing cards. This is the first card that came out, and this is the Messenger Oracle by Raven Falan. And this is a beautiful deck. Look at that. He's got the snake around him. He's got the butterfly. He's all nature. He is just like, there's, there's energy everywhere. Look at the dragonfly going to the sun. I mean, this card is just beautiful and it says change is unavoidable yes we are going through a change and it is unavoidable every second of every day you undergo change your perception is altered by what you see feel and experience from one moment to the next your body ages and moves closer to death with every breath autumn will will always come to end the bounty of summer, and the new hope of spring will always follow the winter. Changes all around you. Do not let your fear bind you to the past and prevent you from enjoying your present and future. Stop fighting. You cannot resist the inevitable, so choose instead to embrace it with acceptance and peace. I liked that card. I think that is a great uh, ob objective because everybody's fighting. A lot of people are fighting. And it does absolutely no good. The next card that we got was Make the Sacrifice. And this is a dragon with a skull. This says, do you often, oh wait, you will not achieve the outcome you desire if you are unwilling to act upon your intentions. It is not as simple as wanting something to happen or believing that it will happen. You have to make it happen. And to make it happen requires that you be willing and ready to do whatever is necessary, no matter the sacrifice. For everything you desire, you must give of yourself in return. Um, I agree with that card. I think that, yeah, if you want something, you got to go, you got to fight for it. And you know what's interesting? We got... Let me find it. We got the divine. And we also got the all. 
all present? Where'd you go? The I am present. We got the source of all. Your mind is the source of all thought, magic, inspiration, and creativity. Take a moment to dwell within the divine realms of your imagination. Visualize and create endless possibilities and opportunities. Now is the time to nurture the vision within and make them manifest. This was a great reading, everybody. I think this is uh, kind of making us aware of some things that are going on around us, making us aware of the protection that we need to put up. Um, there's a lot of things that are really wonky out there right now, and we have to really uh, take precaution on things, but we have to work on ourselves too. And that was a great, great message. Um, I'm going to marinate on that uh, message tonight. I think that's uh, that was a good message, and I'm probably going to re-listen to it, because usually when I re-listen to something that I do, I, I get something you know, on it. So I, I got a lot of messages out of that. So I'm glad I was able to get back on. I know it, it's the holidays guys. So it's not going to, it might not be every day. You might miss me a couple of days, but I will be back on as soon as possible. Um, right now we're just getting things organized for the holidays and, um, you know, going through the hurricane was crazy back in the end of August. So it's only been a few months and we're still uh, maneuvering things around and we got our Christmas lights up and we got our Christmas stuff done and we've got some stuff done, but um, we're still working on it. We're getting over it, but we still have a lot of work to do. I hope everybody has a magical Christmas and New Year's and everything. Um, I love everybody and may every step in your journey be magical. And you know what? Just be you.